Okay, so this is for U.S. history class. Uh, again, talking about William Sherman, do a reading, and there's a few questions to answer. Um, William Tecumseh Sherman was regarded as one of the most competent and effective military leaders of the Union Army during the Civil War. He was born in Lancaster, Ohio, on February 8, 1820. After his father died at an early age, Sherman's mother split the family. Sherman was sent to live with Thomas Ewing, a lifelong family friend. Sherman's later married Ewing's daughter, Ellen. Sherman attended the United States Military Academy at West Point, graduated in 1840, and was on active duty during the Mexican War. He reported to duty in San Francisco, California. Sherman, however, grew weary of battle and combat, and he resigned his position but remained in the area. <laughs> in time, Sherman entered the banking industry, and he became a business partners with several individuals of different ventures. He then left San Francisco to become superintendent of the Louisiana State Seminary and Military Academy located in Alexandria. Sherman eventually left his job and relocated his family to St. Louis, Missouri, where he was president of the 5th Street Railroad. When the nation moved towards the Civil War in 1861, Sherman contacted the Secretary of War. He offered three years of military service to the nation. While the norm was only three months, Sherman became a colonel in the 13th Regular Infantry, working closely with the 1st Division General Irving McDowell's Army and General Daniel Tyler. He saw action for Civil War during the First Battle of Bull Run, where, due to his use of cannon fire, the Confederate forces defeated him. Sherman was promoted to Brigadier General a few months later. His commanding officer was Robert Je uh, General Robert Anderson, under whom Sherman had previously served. Anderson admired Sherman's strong, no-nonsense work ethic, and the men shared a mutual respect. When Anderson stepped down, Sherman was promoted. Sherman eventually took control of a post at Paducah, Kentucky. He also took over the 5th Division of the Army of Tennessee in 1862, where he observed the inexperience of the troops under his command. At the Battle of Shiloh, for example, troops eventually regrouped and pushed out Confederate forces, but only after reinforcements arrived. Sherman supported Uly Ulysses S. Grant. Here he heard the conquest of Vicksburg in 1863. Sherman also was given control of the entire Tennessee Army. More unsuccessful military campaigns, however, followed. Sherman's troops once again fell to cannon fire at the battles of Missionary Ridge and Chattanooga. Grant once again aided Sherman with advice before beginning the Battle of Atlanta. Grant said to create havoc and destruction of all resources that would be beneficial to the enemy. Sherman had a powerful force of close to 100,000 troops to confront the Confederate forces of General Joe Johnston. The Confederates were able to hold their ground at Resaca, but they could not stop the massive Union army. They were forced to retreat under Sherman's onslaught. Confederate President Jefferson Davis grew tired of Johnson's feeble attempts at keeping the army in one place. He relieved Johnson of his job. John B. Hood took over, but he proved to be equally unsuccessful. His troops fell to Sherman. Hold on, I lost everything. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Confederate General, uh, I'm talking about. both Hood and Sherman worked close together to make sure the city citizens were out of harm's way. When this was complete, the Union Army carefully guarded the city. Hood aggressively tried to make his way back to Atlanta, but his numerous attempts failed. Sherman's main goal was to divide the Confederate Army in two. With this objective in March to the sea, when his massive army moved from Atlanta to Savannah. Before leaving Atlanta, he intended to ravage anything that could provide military support to the Confederacy. The fires, however, raged out of control. Most of the city burned to the ground. On his march to Savannah, Sherman destroyed everything in his path, including crops, livestock, bridges, and railroads. It was now impossible for the South to gain footing in this area. 
After General Robert E. Lee surrendered in 18, uh, 1865, Johnston, who faced Sherman again, surrendered eight days later in Raleigh, North Carolina. Sherman was given control of the Union Army when Grant was elected United States President. Sherman enjoyed an exceptional stint in command before he retired in 1883. There are seven questions. Make sure you answer them in complete sentences. Uh, use a text box. Make sure it's complete sentences, not just one or two words. Make sure you answer that complete question. Some of the questions have two questions embedded into it. Please answer all of them completely. All right. I'll see you tomorrow.